Hi guys, so welcome to my YouTube channel and my name is Shaleen. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is CLP, what are the struggles that you'll face, and how did the pandemic affect the exam. And maybe to some of you, by the end of this video, you might reconsider pursuing law as a career. So what is CLP? CLP is short for Certificate in Legal Practice and it is a postgraduate exam taken by law graduates from foreign university. So public university like UM, UKM, etc. and private university like MMU doesn't really have to take them. They're exempted for it. CLP is a 9 month course and normally you enter during September and you sit for the exam in July. So it consists of 5 papers, consists of 9 subjects. So there is Civil Procedure, Criminal Procedure Code, Evidence, General Paper, and Professional Paper. Now in General Paper, there is going to be a branch where you're going to take Contract and Tort. And Professional Paper, there is Ethics, Probate, Bankruptcy, Slash Winding Up, and Land Law. Now, why is it considered one of the most difficult paper in Malaysia? Now, don't take it from me. I mean, take it from the former DAP Chairman, Mr. Lim Kit Siang. So firstly, the passing rate for CLP according to Wikipedia is 10 to 20 percent. So imagine you're in a hall full of 600 candidates, and if 20 percent out of them, that's only 120 of them would pass. Now the remaining 480 of them, according to the statistic, they would fail. Now that is pretty scary if you thought about it. Like every five students, only one student would pass. Now secondly, it's 100 percent exam based. There is no assignment, no coursework, no practical, no attendance mark. You know, no need to go for class if you want to. So in that 3 hours and 15 minutes, but for GP, you get extra 5 minutes for reading the paper. That's all you get to age your exam. So 15 minutes reading time, 3 hours for answering the paper. So what happens if you fail your paper? If you fail for one paper, it's called a conditional pass. Now, you get 3 attempts to sit for that one paper. Now, you're able to sit for it during your supplementary exam or your main exam. If you fail more than one paper, so it's like 2 papers more, you'll have 3 attempts as well to sit for the paper, but you will have to sit for all 5 of them. You will only be able to sit for them in the following year. It's scary if you thought about it. I mean like, if you fail all 4 attempts, there goes your chance. So last week, I've asked some of my friends on the struggle they face while going through CLP. These are all their comments. Okay, Carmen said that um, the content was too bulky, impossible to fit everything in one human brain. And you said that there is too much in one subject. This can be seen in PP. Now, PP in professional paper because so many different subjects. Yeah, and sometimes, uh, you know, you can't really know which subject you're focusing on. Now, the subjects in CLP consist majority in procedural law compared to substantive law that we have learned during our LB times. Other than understanding the law, and applying it, there's a lot of memorizing going on as well. In 9 subjects, I mean give or take, there's around 100 chapters to memorize. Now, you must be wondering, But you can choose a chapter, right? No need to study all one, ma. Well, not really. Like you see, in civil, CPC and evidence, there's a compulsory question. Now, in most of the time, the compulsory question will consist of a little bit of everything out of the whole syllabus. And in GP, it's not much of a choice. I mean like, for thought, there's only one question, and for contract, there's only one question, so you have to answer both of the questions. <laughs> so it's considered as a compulsory question as well. Out of all the five papers, only PP, the professional paper, you're able to choose which question you wanted to answer. PP, there's like four questions for ethics, three on land law, one on probate, and one on bankruptcy and winding up. Even without the compulsory question, I mean like the way that the questions are structured, there will always be a part A or part B. And most of the time that the questions are structured, they won't really come within one chapter or one topic. So maybe A is on chapter 2 and 3, and then B would be on maybe 26, 27. So if you don't really know all the chapters, then you'll be missing up on a lot of the questions. Like maybe you'll be able to answer question A, but not B. You guys might be wondering that But you can do Pasir to spot question, right? I mean, Pasir can see pattern 1 Don't! Mm -mm. Cause firstly, there is no answer scheme Any answers that we got are from our lecturers And secondly, there is no pattern on how LP could be asked their questions Even questions that are asked last year, we're able to ask it this year Like you know, like sometimes like, we do these things where like Oh, you know, there's been like so many years they've been asking judicial review Maybe this year the moment really come up No they are full of surprises, so like, it's highly, highly advisable not to spot on questions using past year's paper. So next one, I mean this is particularly on the pandemic. It has affected a lot of us 
so it affected the scalp exam as well for our 2019-2020 batch. Okay, so Jingyun said that that is the back-to-back -back paper and that there is long waiting hours in the exam hall prior to the start of the reading time. In the previous batch, there is always a day gap in between of the papers uh, for students to unload the papers they have set and also to refresh their mind, refresh their memory for the next paper. So back-to-back -back paper was really intense, like it was really really intense. I think it was on the 5th we had CPC and then on the 6th we have evidence. We sent for CPC, we went back, we have to unload CPC and then start studying for evidence on the same night. This doesn't sound much, I mean, you know, it's exam. Like it's normal for us to have back-to-back -back papers, but imagine going to the hall early in the morning, waking up at 6, coming back home at around 2, 3, start studying and then do it all over again. Like you have to wake up at 6, go for the paper. So it, it was a pretty tight schedule and it was it was hard for us. In this batch, we were assigned to three locations, specifically MMU, MASA and UM. In the previous years, we understand that we will be taking our exam in UM. But due to the pandemic this year, they can't really fit all of us into one hall. It was announced on the 1st of March by LPQB where they've given us the exam slip, our letter to cross states, and other SOP and rules to comply with. Now this year became sort of a problem for some of the students who are staying outstation and they would need a place to stay nearer to the exam hall. Initially, I was one of them. Like I was looking through Airbnb, hotels, and the place that is nearer to the exam hall. But the logistic was too much. I would have to carry all my books, my clothes, books, so I decided to drive every day. The designated time to reach by the exam hall was 8.30. We reached there around 7.45, 8 ish. We'll find a corner to sit down and then to refresh our memory on the paper that we're gonna sit for on that day. 8.30, the guard will start to ask us to start queuing up for the health check. We will have to go through temperature check and verify that you're not experiencing any symptoms of COVID-19. And once we enter into the building, I mean to avoid overcrowding, we were asked to enter into the hall immediately. The exam doesn't start until 10.30. Most of us enter into the hall like around 9, 9.15. So we would ask to stay on our desk for 1 hour to 1 hour and 30 minutes-ish. So it was a very long waiting time. Like for us, it was a long waiting time where we are anxious, we are nervous for our papers and we are still going through the cases, the law and everything. Yeah, it was a long waiting time but looking back, I think it was necessary to comply with required SOPs. And then there was this 9 months delay from our initial exam date in July. Initially, we were supposed to sit for the exam in July 2020 due to the pandemic. It was postponed twice. So firstly, it was in December 2020 and then finally it was in March 2021. Sensei addresses this where when lecturers added some amendments, new decisions that we need to memorize and the materials we have during and brain no capacity already. Yeah. So every year we have a subject outline given by LPQB to list out what we need to know and prepare for the exam. Now this includes the latest legislation, amendments, cases and decisions, etc. So it's to ensure that our knowledge are on par with the latest changes that is happening around us. It gets pretty stressful to keep adding new things into a last note, into a final notes, like the notes that you study the day before your exam. In the month of March, BAC is still providing lectures. I mean, these are additional lectures that they are giving out to ensure that we are still on par with what we have studied and everything. There are still new cases coming in, so it's pretty stressful during those times. They are just trying to ensure that we, like whatever that is coming out from LPQB, that we are able to answer. What about during preparation and exam week? Angel said that forcing to study something that doesn't intend to follow through. Percy said that it's sleep deprived. Really said that it's packed schedule. And Nathan had a pretty long message. Now I'm just gonna read this out. He said the stress and anxiety leading up to the exam. I'm not sure what it is about CLP, but you really felt that your entire future and career was on the line, even though that's not entirely true. While it's unfair to say that CLP isn't a test on merits, it's certainly required to memorize a bulky amount of information going into the exams since you were not allowed to bring your notes or any materials. And he said that you're not allowed to bring notes or any materials. I mean like yes, we do get to bring our this year is quite different. Uh, previous years we get to bring our own statutes in. This year they provided us with the statutes. Now most of the time you have to be super familiarized with them, like to know where they are and everything. So the statutes are there only for you to check if you are gotten it right. And like sometimes in PP, the only statute they provide you for are National Land Code, Insolvency Act, the Legal Profession Act. For probate, there wasn't really any statute provided. I mean like Wills Act, Distribution Act, Probate and Administration Act. 
even the rules, the, the legal professional rules, I mean, you would have to memorize all of them. So, so there was a lot of memory work going on. Secondly, he mentioned that maintaining your physical health before and during the exam period. This is one aspect I think I neglected. Probably would have done a lot better, but I think staying healthy is half the battle. You need to be well enough to have a clear mind and be well enough to see for exam. In Nathan's case, he had a fever on the day when we were sitting for civil procedure. He wasn't able to enter into the hall because he was at 37.5 so he missed the paper but lucky thing is that he was able to sit for the remaining papers and then uh, he contacted LPQB and said that he was able to sit for the September paper as his first attempt so yeah I mean take care of your health make sure that you are eating well sleeping well so bearing in mind that we have five papers nine subjects couldn't skip a topic 100 chapters to memorize give or take this would be your only ticket to become a lawyer other than the fact that you'll be able to spend a huge amount of money to go for the UK bar. But yeah, this is gonna be your only chance to, you know, become a lawyer. The amount of stress and anxiety that you're going through is unimaginable. There's so much to study, so much to memorize, and there have been so many points in time where I question myself, is this really worth it? Because it does affect your health mentally and physically. I personally have migraines and and with the long hours of studying as well as stressing out, it got them pretty serious. So I have to take several short naps, five to ten minutes every time to really get myself going. I think mean, I'm pretty sure that other people have other ways of handling the stress that they are going through. But I mean you get the picture. That is why it's always advisable to start early and familiarize yourself with the law, the way the questions are asked the way that you're going to answer the questions saying that by doing this you're able to pass for sure I'm not sure myself I mean it makes it less harder to get through it you will see people not showing up for exam you might see them on the first day and they're gone starting from the second or some of them will leave halfway during the exam so see for all the papers don't give up halfway just because you find yourself having a different answer from your peers don't do that give it your best shot and to the CLP candidates just do your best some of you might experience imposter syndrome you're not alone just know that because I've been there, my friends been there, there's so many times you doubt the soul, but it's normal. Just push through, work hard, and not regretting the effort that you put in regardless of what the result is. And as for people who have a friend who are taking CLP or is going through CLP, give them love and support because they need it. Stop saying that it's just an exam. It is, but it's not. <laughs> So I guess that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And let me know in the comment sections below what you think of this video and what you want me to do next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!